Happy Sabbath, children of God. I'm sure you're enjoying the home atmosphere. Thank you. Welcome again for these services. The church service that being held on YouTube, the Seventh-day Adventist church, Central Church YouTube. We have some announcement to make to you. Uh, we are not going to be having on-site worship here as from today, maybe till three weeks or until further notice. You'll be worshiping following the program, the services on YouTube, on the Central Church YouTube. Also, for the young adults ministry, uh, there will be a meeting on Wednesday at 7 p.m. The prayer meeting also, uh, the, prayer, the, the, prayer worship, the prayer meeting will be also meeting at 6, on Wednesday, 6 p.m. Uh, we need to also uh, tell you that for anyone who needs an assistance, the office will be ready to help you from Tuesday to Fridays. Uh, we also have uh, a video for uh, Corwood. Please watch it. Shall we pray? Great God, the God of love, the God of mercy, the God of all creation, we thank you. Thank you for your children who are here, who are here in their homes worshiping you, who are thirsty to hear, your, to hear from your pastors, from your servants, your word. We pray that you power, the Holy Spirit be filled to everyone's heart, into, into everyone's heart. Bless us and bless everyone, dear Lord. For this, I beg in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to invite you for the, for the offering. Today's offering is for uh, Adventist Mission M Ministry of Compassion in Canada. Adventist Ministries of Compassion Canada. You know, you have the habitude of giving out the offering, so keep it up, and may God bless you.
Merope Jika, an Albanian woman, accepted the Adventist truth during the 1940s through Daniel Lewis, an Albanian-born missionary from the United States. For some reason, however, she was not immediately baptized. Then, at the end of World War II, when a communist regime was installed in Albania, all Christian churches were banned and Lewis was arrested. So, Merope was isolated from the larger Adventist community for almost 50 years. Finally, in 1991, after the government lifted some of the religious restrictions, she was found by Ray Dabrowski from the General Conference while he was visiting Albania. Merope told Dabrowski that she had three great desires. First, to be baptized. Second, to hand over to the church the tithe and offerings that she had set aside from her small income for 46 years. And third, to see an Adventist church building in her country. The two first desires were fulfilled before her death in 2001 at the age of 97. Now, let me ask you something. Was Merope foolish for keeping that money for so long, resulting in its value being eroded by 46 years of inflation? Couldn't she have used the funds to help the needy, or even to support lay evangelists in a country ravaged by poverty? Well, apparently Lewis had faithfully taught Merope solid biblical principles when he gave her Bible studies, and she learned them well. The Bible teaches that, one, Tithe must represent 10% of our income. Two, there is a right place to deliver it, God's storehouse. Three, it must be applied according to God's prescription, the support of the authorized ministry. And four, it must be equitably distributed among the authorized ministry. Tithing is an act of worship and submission to the God who established it and gave specific directions about delivering and distributing it. As you return your tithe and give your promise, ask the Heavenly Father to make you humble to accept His guidance in this act of worship. May we put our desires last and God first. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We are ready to uh, begin the Sabbath. It's. Uh, Kind of different to look at all these empty pews we've been used for the last few months to having some people in the congregation so it's a little different today in your uh, ch uh, church hymnal if you notice from number 115 to 150 in your hymnal there are about 35 songs that have to do with the first coming of jesus we spend a lot of time talking about and preaching about the second coming but not near as much about the first and yet, if you think about it, without the first coming, there would not be a second coming. We would be hopelessly lost and have no hope whatsoever. So once a year, it would be nice if we did it more often, at this time of year, we like to sing songs about the first coming of Jesus as a baby in a manger in the little town of Bethlehem. So we will sing three songs that are the way in the manger. Away in the manger, no grief for a bear. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet earth. The stars in the bright sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my side.
silent night. Let us adore Him. Oh, come, let. 
song. We're going to sing number 120. There's a song in the air. There's a song in the air. There's a star in the sky. There's a mother's deep prayer. And a baby's low cry. And the star rains its fire. While the beautiful sing. For the manger of Bethlehem. Rattles the key. There's a tongue of joy. For the wonderful birth. For the virgin sweet boy is the lord of the earth for the sun rains its fire while the beautiful sing for the manger of bethlehem cradles the king we rejoice in the Time for pastoral prayer. Those ones who are able, please kneel down with me. Our God and our Father, the God of love and the God of mercy, the God of all creation, we thank you. Thank you for the privilege of having a, a holy rendezvous with you, holy God. But we are sinful. We pray, dear Lord, that you forgive us all our sins. Forgive us, dear Lord, and cleanse us. And make our hearts ready for your holy word. And your servant, Pastor Rob, that you have sent to us to feed us with your holy food, spiritual food. We pray for him, dear Lord, that you bless him with your spirit, fill him with your spirit, that as he speaks for you, we see you in him, and we are filled with your food, your spiritual food. But with us, dear Lord, from now on, until the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. I'm so happy to be here today. I'm so happy that I'm in good health. I'm so happy that I have a house to live in. I'm so happy that I have food to eat. I'm so happy that I have my friends and family who love me and support me. I'm so happy that I got to see the beautiful trees today covered in snow. And I'm so happy because it's Christmas time. We have many reasons to celebrate, isn't it? So before we start with today's lesson, let's revise. We learned to be a witness for God last Sabbath, right? Remember, when the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive power to be a witness to the whole world. 
So let me start with a question. What do you see on me today? Yes, I see, I can hear people saying that they see a bandage today on my hand and forearm. We tend to look at the bad things in life or the negative things in life, but we don't focus on the good things in life. Nobody noticed my beautiful smile, nobody noticed my pretty dress. We all tend to focus on the negative things in life. Today's story is about Emma and Kelly. Emma and Kelly, they went on a hike through the woods. They followed the same trail and they got home at the same time. And their mom asked, how was your hike? Emma, she was bouncing up and down. It was wonderful, mom. We saw two squirrels chasing each other and a bright red bird. It flew past my head. And look, I plucked a beautiful flower for you. And let's see what Kelly has to say. Kelly, she slumped into the chair. It was awful, mom. Every plant I touched had thorns. It was so hot and the ground was muddy and a bee bust passed right my face and it almost stung me. And look, I got a scratch on my arm where a tree limb scraped me. Both these girls, they went on the same hike. Kelly could only think about things that she didn't like, so she had a bad time. Emma, she walked past the same thorns and she was in the same mud, yet she remembered the good things, so she had a fun hike. Being a Christian doesn't mean that bad things won't happen to you. God treats all people the same. Matthew 5.45 says, he causes the sun to rise on good people and on evil people. And he sends rain to those who do good and to those who do bad. So we need to learn to focus on the good things in life. So being like Jesus means learning to focus on good things in life. Maybe you aren't one of the best baseball players, but you can still have fun that you're playing with your friends. Maybe there's one kid in your class who bothers you but you can still be happy that other kids are your friends. Maybe you don't have as many toys or games, but you can still be happy that you do have toys to play with. So you have to decide what you're going to look for and remember. We all need to look for and remember the good things in life. It can be the things that you like to do, or it can be the time that you spend with your family, or you can decide if you want to look for the bad things in your life, the mean people around you, the mistakes you do in your life, or the things that you don't get to enjoy. We have to decide what we need to look. So we need to learn to look for the good things in life. It will make us like Jesus. And when we learn to go look for good things, people love to be with us because we are happy people, right? Sam, Chapter 9, verse 2 says, I will praise you, God, because you are wonderful and marvelous, and I will sing your name, and I will be happy. So I'm happy because of you, God Most High. So we need to focus on the good things in life. We are surrounded with many bad things, negative things in life. Maybe complicated relationships, financial problems, health issues, or this COVID-19. But we need to focus on the good things. So what did we learn today, kids? We need to learn to focus on the good things in life, and we need to be like Jesus. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this beautiful day. Please help us to learn to look for the good and to be like Jesus. Amen. Bye, kids. Have a good week. Happy Sabbath, church. Today's scripture reading takes place in Revelation 20, verse 6. And it says, Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. May the Lord bless the reading of this word.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, I know you're at home or some of you are here right now, but we're still in church. Amen. Happy Sabbath. It's good to be in the house of God. Um, I don't know about you, but I am choosing gratitude. I, I enjoyed that children's story very much. I think during these times, it's so easy for us to focus on all the crazy things that are happening. But you know what? God is still working. God is still moving. He's still a powerful God. And we just need to trust him even when we can't trace him. Even when we don't necessarily feel him at that moment, we can still trust him. Over the next couple of weeks, unfortunately, we will be uh, shutting our doors due to uh, the new restrictions happening here in Alberta. But church is not close. You can still watch online. You can still connect virtually. And I have a challenge for you. Yes, I'm talking about you. I have a challenge for you here too. Um, during these weeks, I challenge you to reach out to someone. Call someone. Text someone. And see how they are doing. We will come out of this, this pandemic stronger, I believe, if we stay close to God and if we stay close to each other. Um, before we go into the Word of God, uh, this morning I invite you to have a word of prayer with me. Heavenly Father, this is not my time, this is your time. This is not my church, this is your church. These are not my people, these are your people. And so I ask, Lord, that you would speak once more. Speak for me, speak through me, and speak to me this Sabbath morning. In your holy name we pray, let God's people say, amen. amen. Last week we spoke about what? Let's see if you remember. For those of you that are here worshiping, what, what did we speak about last week? The second coming and the resurrection. For those of you that guessed it online, yes, we spoke about what happens when we die. You know, we, we, we discussed the fact that most religions can agree on the fact that there's life after this life, right? Most people can agree on that. But according to the Bible, according to the Word of God, we establish that when we are dead or when someone is dead, they cannot communicate. They can't visit you. They can't come to your house. And as comforting as that may feel for some people, according to the Bible, when someone is dead, they do not turn into a plant, they do not turn into a cow, they do not turn into a moose, uh, and, and in fact, we know that they're not in heaven. And, and unless you spend time with someone who's grieving the loss of their loved one, we can understand why someone would think that their loved one is in heaven. But they're not, right? Uh, heaven would not be heaven if they had to look down and see the pain that's happening here on earth. I think if, if, if some parents went to heaven and saw what their kids were doing, they would, they would lose their mind. So we know when we die, we do not go to heaven. We do not go to hell immediately. In fact, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5 tells us that the dead knows what? The dead knows what? The dead knows nothing. What is nothing? Zero. Thank you. I love that answer. Zero. Nothing is zero. It means they can't get an extra promotion. They can't do children's story. They can't preach. They can't do the work on the sound system. The dead knows nothing. Last week, we spoke about an interesting equation. I hope you remember it. We spoke and we said that the body plus the breath of life, remember in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, God breathed into man the breath of, the, the breath of life, and he, he, man became a living soul. So the body plus the breath of life equals a living soul. On the flip side, a living person minus what? Minus what? what speak to me. You, you, can put it, you can put it in the chat, too. We can be interactive this morning. Minus the breath equals a corpse. So when someone dies... They are sleeping in Jesus. That's it. They're sleeping, waiting for the second coming of Jesus. 
And then we ended with this text here, John chapter 5, verse 28. If you have your Bibles, read it with me. This morning we're, we're going to be going through quite a few texts. And so just have your Bibles close by. John chapter 5, verse 28. We're reading in the New King James Version. It says, do not marvel at this. The Message Bible puts it like this. The Message says, don't act so surprised. For the hour, the time is coming in which all who are in the graves, come on somebody, will hear his voice, verse 29, and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of what? Of life. And those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So we, we notice two resurrection here. The resurrection for those that have done good and the resurrection for those who have done evil. So we're aware of what happens to the people who are part of the first resurrection. We're aware of that. But what happens to the other group of people? For that, we have to go to Revelation chapter 20. If you have your Bibles, go there with me. Apocalypse, the Revelation chapter 20, verse 5. We're going to start with verse 5 for the sake of clarity. Revelation chapter 20, I'm going to give you a few seconds to get there. Revelation chapter 20, verse 5. It says, but the rest of the dead did not what? Did not live again until the thousand years were finished. And then verse 6 stresses the importance on why we have to be part of the first resurrection. Here it goes. Blessed and holy is he who is part of the first resurrection over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him for a thousand years. So as we read the passage of scripture, I, I want you to see this. There's two things happening here. We see uh, the, this notion of a second resurrection, and we also see uh, this intro of a thousand years, a thousand year quality time with God that's also known as the millennium. So John, when Jesus comes back, there's two groups of people. There's two groups. Uh, you know, in life, sometimes we, we like to choose the middle. Sometimes when people, uh, you, you don't have the option to be liberal or conservative, you'll choose the middle. What, what, what would the middle ground be? It, <laughs> you said it doesn't exist. Is it NDP? Is that? Okay, so that would be the middle ground, right? In the U.S., you have the Democrats, you have uh, the Republicans, and, and, and if people don't feel comfortable with either choice, they'll choose an independent. But when Jesus comes back, there's no middle ground. You can't choose that neutral stance. Either you're saved or you're lost. Either you choose good or evil. Either you choose to surrender your life or you choose to refuse. As we look at these two groups of people, I like to highlight that there's four categories within these two people, Brother Jidiri. The first category of people we have is the righteous dead. The righteous dead. Those are the people who, who are sleeping in Jesus. First Thessalonians 4, verse 16 tells us what happens to them at the second coming of Jesus. It says, and the dead in Christ will rise what? First, right? So you have the righteous dead, those that are sleeping in Jesus. When he comes back, they rise first. Then you have the righteous living. So, for example, if Jesus was to come this morning, we who are alive, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 17, tells us what happens. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet our Lord and Savior. So you have that first group, the saved. You have the righteous saved. You have the living saved. You have the dead saved. And then you have another group. You have another group. You have the unrighteous living. And according to Revelation chapter uh, 6, verse 14 to 17, Revelation chapter 19, verse 21, Jeremiah 25, verse 33, you can look those up later. We know that when the power, when Jesus comes back, that the glory, the, the power, the, there's an earthquake that, that, that earth has never experienced, and those living unrighteous folks, they are slain. They're slain. 
And then you have the unrighteous dead. What happens to that group? Revelation chapter 20, verse 5 tells us, they remain in their graves until the end of the what? The thousand year period, the millennium. So they shall reign, they shall be with the priests of God and, and of Christ and shall reign with him for a thousand years. I remember as a young person, you know, going to uh, all these series that our church would put on, you know, it was very confusing when we would get to these points. I said, well, what, what is this thousand year period? What, is, what exactly, what's taking place? What's taking place in heaven? What's taking place on earth? Maybe you're asking that question right now. What exactly is this thousand year period? The first thing we have to mark, this thousand year period, I, I believe it's on the screen, it's marked, there's a start and there's an end. The start is the second coming of Jesus, and you have the first resurrection. And at the end of this thousand year, you have the second resurre resurrection. And so what exactly is taking place during this thousand year period? I'm glad you asked. Revelation chapter 20. I told you we're going to spend a lot of time in Revelation today. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 to 3 says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Verse 2, he laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan. Come on, I'm getting excited. And bound him for a thousand years, and he cast him into a bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him. You know, Satan tried to imprison Jesus in the tomb, right? But he was not successful. But we see here in this text that God has, has, has no, no problem in restraining Satan. He has no problem in keeping him in his place. He has no problem of placing him in solitary confinement. You know, solitary confinement is one of the things that being looked over in the prison reform system in the United States right now because they realize when you lock somebody up for 23 hours, it drives them insane. And so we see that the devil is incarcerated. He's placed in solitary confinement. He has no one to bother. He has no one to bug. He's restrained in this bottomless pit. And shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more we see the main mode of attack for the enemy is to deceive, it's deception. Till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, Brother Jadiri, he must be released, the scripture says, for what? A little season, a little while. He's going to be released after this, after this thousand year period, he's going to be released for a little while. The second thing we see as we look at this thousand year period, we see that we serve a God who's a promise keeper. Remember in John chapter 14, Jean 14, verse 2 et 3, it says, In my Father's house are what? Many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you will be also. In other words, his riches become our riches. His food becomes our food. His garden becomes our garden. His pets become our pets. His house becomes our house. You know, when I got married... You know, I, I, I wanted to be intentional about preparing the house for the jittery. And so I remember I was saving every dime. Like I, I was living on rice and beans. That's it. That's all I was, because I was saving, because I was preparing a place 
so that I can receive my bride, right? And I, and I, I didn't just want to bring her into a place that didn't look presentable. I didn't, I didn't want to bring, and so I remember I would save every dime I had, and, and I went to the, the, to the furniture store, and, and I, I chose something, and, and we went and we bought new appliances, and I prepared the house because I wanted her to be comfortable because my house became her house, right? My food became her food. My, and so God has gone to prepare a place for us, so that where he is, there, oh, I can't wait for that day to see the joy, to see the reunions, to see the parties, to, be the, to see the celebrations. And then we can talk about the moments we had here on earth. And I can say, uh, Elder Goff, remember that Friday night when we were down in earth and, and the sound system was acting up? Uh, Brother Deepak, good to see What? Brother Deepak, it's good to see you. What? Man, guys, it's going to be exciting. I'm going to be like, Daniel, remember that Sabbath when you were at church and we were catching up? We're going to be able to have this reunion to be with Jesus in fellowship and communion with no one to bother us. But John gives us more insight as to what we will be doing during this time. Watch. Revelation, I told you we're going to spend some time in Revelation. Apocalypse 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was what? Was committed to them. Hmm. Who's, who's, the, who's them? Who's, who's they? If you go back to 1 Corinthians, it's not on the screen, but if you go back to 1 Corinthians 6, verse 2 to 3, Paul says, do you not know that the saints will judge the world? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? So the text says, and I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. They saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the, their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their forehead or on their hands. Why would we be involved in such a task? Why would the, 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 the boss of this universe, why would he choose us? To be part of this. You see, during this thousand year period, during this millennium, the records of the loss, it's out in the open. We're able to see that book where the most guarded secrets of the heart is exposed. The most guarded secrets of, of the heart and mind is exposed, and then we'll be able to say, God, you're merciful. Mm, 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 mm. you're just oh okay you're you're faithful oh you're covered all of our questions will be answered elder goff like all the you know the, the the especially my young people as i talk to them they we have all these questions all of your questions daniel will be answered during this thousand year and it's crucial that we have this thousand year period because could you imagine going to heaven and not seeing someone you thought should be there? Like someone, like I'm not talking about someone you, you thought was a little bit crazy, but someone you really thought was faithful. Like you would get there and you'd be tempted to say, Jesus, you're not, God, you're, you're not fair. You're not kind. If, if so-and-so's not in heaven, he was so faithful. She, she was so faithful. Oh, he served you. If we didn't have this thousand year, we would, we would accuse God of not being just. We would accuse him of being mean. We would accuse him of not being faithful. But it will become clear once and for all that God is just that God is fair, that God is long-suffering, that God is merciful. You see, for thousands of years, Satan has blamed God for so many things. We blame him for coronavirus. We blame him for little babies dying. We blame him for all the things once and for all. We will be able to see that God is love, 
that God is fair, that God is just, and all the bad notions will be put to rest because God's character will be revealed. And that's why we'll be able to say during this thousand years, we'll be excited. That's why there's no more crying. That's why there's no more pain because God will reveal to us everything. Pastor Hampshire, I was speaking to him today. By the way, welcome back. Good to have you guys back. He was saying this thousand year is a grieving process. You know, when someone's grieving, there's, there's joy, there's, there's different stages of grief, right? Because we get there, and then there's some people we're looking for, some people we don't see, and God's taking us, and he's like, look, 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 look how many times I tried. Look, 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 I tried so many times. And so this person is not here, not because I don't love them, but because they chose not to follow. During this thousand years, Satan is in solitary confinement, no one to tempt. And I think it's so good that God gives him a thousand years, Brother Orville, because Satan has been claiming for so many times that he can do a better job than God. That's what, from day one, he's been saying, I can do a better job. And so God gives him a thousand years. And after that, he comes up with nothing. He fails, complete failure. Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. He's released for a short while. Now when the thousand years were, ha have expired, Satan will be released from his prison. <laughs> Look at verse 8. And will go out to deceive the nation. After a thousand years of solitary confinement, after a thousand years of timeout, he still doesn't change. You know, my wife was telling me, she said, sometimes when her students are acting up in class, she'll give them timeout. And with the little ones, you don't have to give them too much time. You give them about four or five minutes in timeout. When they come out of time, time, timeout, there's a little bit of remorse. You know, maybe after a couple minutes, they go back to what they're doing, but there's, there's a tiny bit of remorse. But after a thousand years of solitary confinement, a thousand years of reflection, he's still doing the same thing. And so he goes out to deceive the nations, which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle whose number is as the sand of the sea. Satan goes out to deceive, and, and we're told that there's, there's, there's a, a people that are a number, that, that, that number is as sand of the sea. There's so many people, like I don't know if, you, if you've been on a beach, but you can't count the sand on the sea. The, the text is saying that there's so many people, there's so, fall, so many fallen angels, so many wicked people that are there that he's, he's, he gathers them. And these people are the ones who, who refuse to follow Jesus, the, ones, the wicked dead, those that refuse to accept them, those that chose evil over good. And so at this time, the Bible tells us that the new Jerusalem, the holy city is coming down because God's original plan was for Eden restored, right? That's, what, that's, that's his original plan. So this new Jerusalem is coming down, and here's what uh, 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 Lucifer and his, his troops, his military, here's, here's what they do. They want to take Jerusalem by force. Revelation chapter 20, verse 9. They went up on the breath of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city. So they're getting ready. They're, they're, getting, they're like, okay. And, and it's interesting to see that Satan doesn't change. And even the people that chose him in the first place, they don't change. Because they're all rallied to attack this city. The Bible tells us that a fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. It's done. It's finished. This problem is completely out of the equation. God restores what he had planned. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I, I, I don't uh, know what it is exactly that you're going, but I know 
that you've had some crazy things happen in your life. You've seen some things. Like, I, I never thought in my lifetime that we would be able to see a, a pandemic that would shut down the world. Like, maybe, maybe a little town, maybe a city, maybe for a week, maybe for, but for all. I never thought I would see. You've seen a lot of things. But I want to remind you this morning that the human mind, cannot even begin to comprehend what God has in store for us. Like, artists will try to paint, they'll try to sketch with the kingdom of heaven, but our minds are not even capable of comprehending what God has in mind. The problems of this world, we can't deal with it on our own. We can do our best, but we, we can't deal. Like, there's so many, there's there's, there's so many problems. You, you can help me name them th this morning. We have, we have COVID, right? What else do we have? We have issues of uh, injustice. What else do we have? What, what, are, what are, tell me the problems of this world. Job loss. We have what else? Divorce. Divorce. We have what? We have lost pe people that had to, to experience the loss of a husband, l the loss of a child. There's so much. Like, even when we do our best, even when we're operating at 100%, we can't handle the problems of this world. But we have hope that Jesus will come back and will put an end to this problem. Blessed is he who is part of the first resurrection over such the second death has no power. The first resurrection is a resurrection of abundance. It's a resurrection of blessings. It's a resurrection of power. It's a resurrection of privilege. Jesus will come back. And this nightmare of sin will be no more. I, I, I got excited when I thought about that. I've seen a lot, and just my, my personal, and I, I'm, I, I know you've seen your, your fair share of things. I know you've experienced things. I've, I, maybe, maybe you're watching this, this video uh, this morning. Maybe you're even feeling anxious. You're feeling depressed. You're tired. Young person, you're in the house. You're tired of online teaching. You're tired of on. You've experienced your fair share of problems. But when Jesus comes back, and this new Jerusalem comes down, and Satan is done. The nightmare of sin is over. Maybe this morning you want to make a decision to follow Jesus. You can put that in, in our comment section. Just say, I, I, I want to follow. I want to follow. I want to follow. You can put that right now. Let's say you want to take that next step to be baptized. Please leave a message on the comment or give us a call. And we will arrange for that to happen. Because there's one way for us to seal that deal. It's to surrender our hearts to Jesus. Because in a little while, we're going home. Let us sing a song that we steer us by the way. In a little while we go. In a little while we go in home. In a little while, in a little while, we shall cross the billows home. We shall meet at last when the stormy winds are past. In a little while we go. In a little while we go, we know, and the grace of God will our daily strength renew. In a little while we go, we know, in a little while, in a little while, we shall cross the beach.
billows flow. We shall meet at last when the stormy winds are past. In a little while we go home. We will smooth the path for so weary way won't be. In a little while we go In a little while we go in hope. In a little while, in a little while, we shall cross the billows fall. We shall meet at last when the stormy winds are past. In a little while we go. There's a rest beyond, there's relief from every care. In a little while we go wait all. And no tears will fall in the city bright and fair. In a little while we go in home. In a little while, in a little while, we shall cross the below. We shall meet at last when the stormy winds are past. In a little while we go, we know. Amen, amen. In a little while we're going home, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for coming into this world the first time. We thank you for dying on the cross. And we thank you because you promise that you'll come back again. And so, Lord, help us. Give us peace that surpasses human understanding. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We're so glad to have you here with us this Sabbath morning. We invite you to come back next week. Next week, we're going to be taking a look, a deeper look at the second coming of Jesus. What are some of the warning signs? How can we prepare ourselves? When will we know for sure that Jesus will come back? And so invite a friend. Come back and take care of yourself today. Have a beautiful, awesome Sabbath.